previously on The Bill. You couldn't have pushed down Marek off the roof because you were changing a tyre for a disabled driver. I'm sorry, Superintendent, but you'll have to do a lot better than that. Can you give this to Superintendent Chandler? He'll know where I am. Oh, suck the juggler! Yeah, okay, thank you, Mr. Scott. 24 hours I've had this. The same record over and over. <laughs> Please, we open up. There's only so much you can take. Mr. Farrell, are you in there? Mr. Scott, can you stand back, please? I think his wife left him. He's always been a bit funny. Never wants to stop for a chat. I wonder why. He, his missus, it couldn't be nicer. Uh, chew the fat, pass the time of day with you, whatever. I didn't see her very often, Mr. but... Mr. Scott, you might get hurt. <laughs> Tony. That's Samina. Some... What happened? Kevin, Samina's been abducted. What? I was taking her to the refuge. Two guys with baseball bats showed up. They took her away. From here? Outside the front. So we were stitched up? You get me to tell you how to find her, and you as good as send it back to her parents! Hey! I was trying to help you, both of you. You've got to believe no! me. She's right! You're Asian! It doesn't matter if you're a cop. All that matters is a family. If that's the way it is, how do you think I got this? So what are you doing about it? I'm off the case! Sarge is out there looking for her now. She could be anywhere. And is if the Gundals did have anything to do with Samina's abduction, how did they know she was at Well, we Hill? still don't know for sure if they did have anything to do with it. Um, hello again, Mr. Gundal. Uh, could we have a word with you? Yes, of course. Have you heard of Samina's whereabouts since we last spoke? No, as we told you before, we've no idea who might have taken her. Mrs. Gundal? I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask your permission to search the premises. Catherine. Your officers looked through the house the other day. They found nothing. You won't find anything either. Yes, but when Samina came to the station, she spoke to us. We have reason to believe that she may have been abducted in order to be forced into a marriage. That's ridiculous. Well, that's as may be. But I'm afraid I need you and Mrs. Gundar to come with us now for further questioning. Habib, you don't need me to go too, do you? I should stay here in case Samina returns. We need both of you. What is she doing? No, stay there, please, Mr. Gundar. Is that all there is in Mickey's collection? Only enough for a couple of pints. He's coming back here tomorrow. He deserves some kind of welcome. I have to think of something. Has someone been drinking whiskey? Whew, smells like someone's had a party there. Yeah. Well, as a matter of fact... How's the super? Meaning what? Just that he was down at Tim Tudgel House this morning with Chief Superintendent Henry. I just as thought you might... As far as I'm aware, everything's fine. No sign of a Sarge. Right, Mr. and Mrs. Gundar, shall we? Any news? My solicitor just called. The CCTV tape at Canley Car Park doesn't show anything conclusive. OK, so they can't prove that Anne jumped, or... Any sign of Jeff? No. But, I mean, you can imagine how it sounds, can't you? I couldn't have murdered Anne, my lord, because I was changing a flat for a disabled driver. Without an index or a full name, I haven't got an alibi. So the jury's still out, then? You tell me. Look, I heard what you said about the baby and us. It could be something we both need, but with all this going on, I just can't... Debbie, I need you now. Mickey's coming back tomorrow, and with Jack in his present state of mind, I just don't trust him. I can handle Mickey and the DCI. You don't know what they're capable of. 
Don't forget, they went to see Anne Merrick before the rape allegation. I'm convinced it was them who put the idea in her head in the first place. What, to jump? No, the idea that the rape had actually happened. You're not giving up on me, are you? Of course not. Look, I'll tell you what. I'll get some money out the bank tomorrow. You can go buy yourself an engagement ring. Forget it. Don't worry. Heard from your sister lately? Kelly, not a squeak. She's settling into my house, all right? Well, with Kelly, there's enough stuff in for her. She said when she's going to give you the rent yet? Ah, uh, it's no hurry. I'll find her feet first. It's hard enough moving house with a little one to look after. There's not in here, so. There must be something. Names, addresses. Diary, notebook, phone numbers. Bit of a weird feeling, actually. Uh, it's always like this. Sudden death. Like they're still here. You get used to it. No, I'm not about Karen being in Sun Hill. Long time since I've had my family round. I'm sure you should go around there. It's got to be a brother, sister, friend. Anything to tell us where Mrs Farrell's staying. I've only got the neighbour's word that she left. She'll be on holiday or something. Well, if she has, I can see why she'd want to leave this behind. Where's the body? It's just through there, Sarge. Well, the locks and windows are intact. Doesn't look like there's only one left in a hurry. We're having trouble locating the wife, though. It's a nasty bang on the head he's got there. On the other hand, it may have been the prospect of the wife's cooking. Andrew, sorry, I haven't had a chance to catch up with you. Heard you were down at Tintagel House. Everything well, I trust? Yeah, just Chief Superintendent Henry dotting the eyes. We're still waiting for more information on the red car seen around the timeless chambers was snatched. Some of your uniform are chasing that up. The rest have been down at Jubilee Wharf, where the bodies had dumped. Hey, you got a good lead? Yeah, we've got some information on an item found at the wharf. Uh, a necklace engraved with a woman's name. Uh, Sarah Black. Do we know? No, but I'd like to request more manpower to try and locate her. See if she lives in Sun Hill, if she's filed as a misper. Well, uniform is seriously under strength right now, but I'm sure you can spare one of your officers, yes, Jack? Well, uh, Sarah Black's quite a common name, and uh, this necklace could have been washed up from anywhere. I think it's a long shot. Well, it may be a long shot, but if we've got any chance of establishing a link to the killer, I think it's crucial we do everything we can. I see that. Thanks. Good. We'll just keep Jack up to speed on anything that comes in before the TV appeal. Jack, you can report directly to me. Sir, I thought we had an agreement that you'd let me run my own operations from now on. And I thought you told me any agreement we had was off until my alibi was cleared. That is right, isn't it, Jack? Morning, Robbie. Haven't seen you for a while. How's it going down here? Very well, thank you, sir. I've um, totally revamped the filing system and I've sorted out the property cupboard. It's all uh, ship shape. Glad to hear it. We'll keep up the good work. Morning, Jim. So, if you'd like to wait out here until we've finished, we'll take a statement from Mrs. Gundar and then you can go. She doesn't know anything either. Mrs. Gundar? Not much to say, did he? Let's see what we can get out of the boy. Mrs. Gundar? This way, please. For the benefit of the tape, this is an interview with Mrs. Asma Gundar. The officers present are Sergeant Ackland and PC Bradford. Mrs. Gundar, we'd like to ask you about the abduction of your daughter from Sun Hill Police Station. Can you tell us what you know? Only what I've told you. Samina ran away from home and she hasn't been in contact since. And do you know why she left? She didn't tell us. The young man came to our house yesterday. I think she went to be with him. Why did he want to come round to your house? He was angry. He accused Kamal Zafar of taking her away. It wasn't true, of course. Kamal is a friend of the family. Did anyone see the attackers? We have a description. Mrs. Gundar, we spoke to Samina earlier. She seemed very frightened. She said that you and your husband were forcing her into a marriage. How could we force her? We'd never do anything to hurt her. 
Well, that isn't the impression she gave us. It's quite usual for brides to get the jitters. Do you think Mr. Zaffa might know who took Samina? No. I think you should ask the young man. It must be his friends who did it. Oh, there's no way that Kevin could have contacted anyone. He was under the supervision of an officer all the time he was at the station. Mrs. Gunda, did you know that Samina had come into the station before I called you to tell you that she'd been abducted? Yes. P.C. Bradford telephoned me to say that we could come and collect her. But just as we were coming to fetch her, that's when you rang to tell us the men had taken her away. We don't know where she's gone. Right. Thank you very much, Mrs. Grindel. Interview terminated at 19.32. Thank you, Mrs. Grindel. Good night. really hear that right? Did you call the Gundars when Samina came in here to give us None of us up? knew she was going to be abducted. What on earth possessed you? She came in here for protection and you told them exactly where to find her. I thought Kevin was to blame. The amount of times I've had him in a station, Sarge, I just thought her parents should know she's safe. Safe? <gasps> Get upstairs and find out if the TSG search has come up with anything. With any luck, but I've found the poor girl in one piece. I can't... It's all night, Sarge. Do you know if the soup is gone? Why are you asking me? Sarge, I've got a confession to make. Go on. Some bloke brought in a bottle of whiskey for Superintendent Chandler and I smashed it. I knocked it off the desk. Yeah, well, he's got other things on his mind right terrible. Now. The guy was in a wheelchair. Did you get his name? He just said Jeff. It was to say thank you and the soup would know what he meant. Did he get his address? Car registration? Just left it and went. The bottle. Where's the bottle? It's in the bin. Give it to me. It's full of broken glass. Give me the bin. Robbie, you're a star. Excuse me. It's Jeff, is it? That's right. But we haven't met before. I would have remembered. You got long to go? Well, a few months yet. I'm DS McAllister, Sun Hill, CID. Is John sent it down to say thank you? You mean Superintendent Chandler? Yeah. I am big style. Backhouse Lane isn't the best place to break down. I've been irregular with those girls for years. Not one of them wanted to help. Well, they swore blind they didn't know you. <laughs> I was with Angie. She knows I'm married. Now, you wouldn't know what time exactly it was when the superintendent helped you. Half nine till... getting on till half ten. We had problems with the spare. Is there anything wrong? No, nothing at all. How did you find me? You left the price tag on the scotch and I found the shop and they said you were irregular. Can't get it with much in a wheelchair. Talking of which, my wife will be out soon. Oh, I'll, um... Thanks very much. I've got to make a call anyway. Good luck with the baby. Thank you. Gov? I've got some news. Jeez, whose idea was this? Everybody's. We just wanted to welcome you back. Uh, we? Who's we? The super, I suppose. The team. You know, people. Oh, cheers. I'll pick it up later. Right. Nice one. Thanks a lot. Jack, darling. You. 
What do you want this time? BC Rickman kindly issued me with a fine, so I've brought my driving details in. Certainly, sir. I'd be only too happy to help. I suppose you'll still have to attend Kevin's no, hearing. I didn't know but that. until then, I don't want to hear another squeak out for you, understand? Such. What's happened? It seems that Cathy alerted the Kundars when Samina came into the station. You called them? They had every right to know. So what? You told them exactly where they could get their hands on her. Safe in the knowledge that she'd be here while they send their muscle round to Sun Hill. That'll do, Brandon. Are you still gonna object to Kevin being bailed? Whatever's going on with Samina, he's still guilty of assault, and it's not for the first time. He deserves more than a caution. You were there, Kathy. You saw what Zafar was like. Kevin was only using reasonable force. Look, I know you think you're an expert in all this, I don't think but that. listen. I'm not going to bend the rules just to suit your prejudices. How's the search going? TSG come up with anything? I don't know, Sarge. I'm off the case, remember? Officially, yeah, but stay in touch with anything that comes in and let me know, will you? And uh, keep it quiet. Yeah. How did it go with Luke? I take it he didn't bump into that nasty axe of yours. Well, he did, actually, but it was the best thing that could have happened. It sort of brought us closer together. You off? Uh, yeah, Robbie's just called. Simon's in the station. What's he want? Well, I gave him a ticket for a broken indicator light. He's coming with his registration details. I thought you said you liked him. Yeah, I kind of wish I hadn't have done it now. <laughs> well, if you want to get back in his good books, you should give him what he's always wanted. A story. Ha ha. <laughs> Hello, stranger. Such. I didn't hear the brass band play. I thought Robbie was organising a party for you. Listen, you mentioned the uh, governor about him. He's around somewhere. You were dark horse, weren't you, Sarge? So come on in, who's a lucky fella? What do you mean? <laughs> come on. You ain't gonna tell me it's all them donuts you've been eating, are you? So when can we expect a pit of power? Listen, Mickey, um, I don't want this interfering with work. I'd appreciate a bit of hush. So you're going to try and keep this a secret, yeah? I'll give you a month here. You're going to have to be wearing a sign saying, keep clear, a wide vehicle. Very funny. So come on in. Who's your father? Definitely no one you'd know. I've just spoken to Chief Superintendent Henry. What did he have to say? I'm in the clear. Thanks to Jeff. No, thanks to you. I mean it. I don't know what I did on without you. Look, maybe we can go for a bite to eat later. Back to normal, eh? Yeah? More than normal, I hope. I've just seen Mickey. He's noticed I'm pregnant. Congratulations, I hear. Yes, Jack, thank you. Well, before we pop the champagne, there's a little matter I'd like to clear up with you. It doesn't concern you, Debbie, so if you don't mind. So, that's 40 quid, then. Probably buy yourself a new car for that. Simon. What now? You gonna do me for jaywalking? Simon, I know I owe you an apology. But I did try yesterday by the river, but you were having none of it. I looked your wife up on the web. Did you? 18 months is a long time. You don't know where a person is. So you believe me now? I suppose I shouldn't have doubted you in the first place. Look, I'm on duty now, but I could help you with something. I know a bit of gossip. It could be a story. What's it about? Off the record, right, have you heard of somebody called Anne Merrick? So, it's over and done with, Jack. And no matter what you may think of me, I'm innocent. And it's there in black and white. It's not black and white, though, is it? How do you mean? Debbie's alibi for the rape allegation. 
She told me that you put her up to it. What did she say? She said that you couldn't account for yourself over Anne's rape. So she told internal investigations that you were with her. I didn't touch Anne. But I did go and see her. Jack, I knew how it would look. Do internal investigations know? No. But they could still find out. Unless? What we were talking about the other night. No more cat and mouse. You just let me run my department without any interference. OK. You win. You get to handle CID on your own. And we're like sleeping dogs lie. We're going to put this behind us now, once and for all. So, do we have a truce? <laughs> oh, yeah, that journalist, Simon Kitson, the one that did the interview with PC Stamp. I think we should get him in and maybe nip any of our crafts in the bud. Well, if he can do it for Johnny Stamp, he can do it for you. Yeah, something like that. Mickey! What's that? Jack told me you were here. It's nice to have you back on board. Well, it's good to be here, sir. Bit of a surprise getting a transfer back here, but... Thought you got rid of me for good, eh? Yeah. Well, look, I'll tell you what, we'll catch up later. Jack, thanks for that. Sir, I'll get on to kitchen. Thank you. Mickey. Kathy, a personal plea. Of all the people who are to blame for this, don't let Kevin be the one that suffers. It's not up to me. The magistrates will find us as he fits. What is it with you? All he was doing was defending the woman he loves. See what I can do. This is a big moment, then. So does anyone know where Chandra was on the night she died? Not last I heard. Just that Anne was an old girlfriend of his. It's pretty shocking that she'd accuse him of raping and turn up dead. Yeah, it could be interesting. Look out, here's the Gov. I shouldn't be here. Robbie told me you'd be here. Yeah, Gov. I just had to spare our Simon Kitson, I'm DCI Meadows. I want to tee up an interview with Superintendent Chandler. When did those two get so pally? Who? DCI on a super. Is she having a right old laugh just near? I know they had a drink a while back. Maybe they'd straighten a few things out. So now they're the best of mates, is that it? A lot's been happening since you've been away, Mickey. Yeah, so I see. And they actually committed suicide? Yep. Well, are you sure? Of course I'm sure. I'm the one who proved he had nothing to do with it. Case closed. Along with the help of the DCI. Jack Meadows helped to clear Chandler's name. He hadn't done anything wrong. Here, look into this for me, please. Get your mind off things. Who's Sarah Black when she's on? I don't know, but it was found at the river. And there's a chance it's connected to the serial killer and DCI Ross needs an officer to find the owner. Great. So the superintendent of the Sunny has got CRD busy working on some wild goose chase while he gets away with blue murder. Now, what you got to do, you got to get a feel for the person that you're telling. Find out how close they were to the deceased and then tell them as gently as possible. Um, I can do it, you know, if you want. Nah, piece of cake. All right. Go on in. You're on. Excuse me, mate. Your boss around. I am the boss. It's me up there, Wayne Beskett. Waiting? No. PC Gary Best, Sun Hill Police. Doesn't Mr Farrell work for you? Did. Hasn't turned up for the last three months. We're going fine, regular guy, and then one day he just doesn't turn up. So his P45 went in the post. Well, there's a good reason for him not turning up. Why? Has he been nicked? Not exactly. Good one. What? I'm so sorry to have to tell you this, sir. Get on with it. I've got some difficult news. I'm afraid, sadly, Mr Farrell has passed over to the other side. No 
don't mind me, mate. I couldn't stand him. <laughs> yeah. Gov? Mickey. You anyway, right? So you made yourself a new friend? Well, oh, keep your friends close, your enemies closer still. Is that what he's doing? The super and I had a drink after the rape allegation was dropped. He wanted to rebuild some bridges. And I made him agree to bring you back. So he struck a deal with him? Well, that's not true. I heard you helping beat her up Fran's death. I was helping Debbie. Why do you want to do that? There's something you should know. I suppose you've got a contact number for Mrs. Farrell. John kept himself to himself. That was the only thing I liked about him. Only we need to find a wife. Let her know her husband's dead. No point asking me, mate. Done a runner, has she? Debbie in here, mate. She also supplied him with an alibi. She said she was with Chandler when Anne Merrick said she was being raped. Well, we can't trust her, can we? No, Debbie's not a part of this. I mean, granted, her judgment is questionable. But she's as much a victim in all this as any of them. Yeah. Chandler's girlfriends do have a way of becoming victims. That's what you mean? Do you think Debbie's worth saving? Look, I don't want another Kate Spears. So what do you suggest we do? There's nothing we can do. There's no proof. Debbie will deny it. End of story. Chandler is cleaning up his act. So whatever went on in the past, there's no point in taking this any further. I cannot believe that I'm hearing this. Well, that's the way it is. Yeah, for you, maybe. I mean, you've got your little deal with them, haven't you? As far as I'm concerned, it ain't good enough. I don't want any trouble, Mickey. What did you say? That beat up the poor little bounty hunter was attacking me at the same time? I was there too, Kevin. I told the magistrates what happened as I saw it. Great. I've organised bail. I'll deal with the surety forms in due course, OK? All right. Right, Kevin. I'll see you at the hearing in a few weeks' time. You mean I'm free to go? In view of Samina's abduction, I think we need to take more statements from those concerned. And remember for the next time, you can't just go around doing what you like to people, all right? Yeah. Thanks. I'd like to speak to PC Bradford, please. It's Mrs. Gunda. I'm afraid PC Bradford's at court at present. Could get your Sergeant Ackland if you like. No. I don't want to speak to her. I'll wait. You still here? Thanks. Yeah, I've just uh, had a tour of the station. How did it go with DCI Meadows? Well, he wants me to do some sort of puff piece on the superintendent. Sounds like someone's worried about their PR. <laughs> Thanks for what you said earlier. About Anne-Merrick? About my wife. Well, I know how it feels to lose someone. I lost somebody in the fire. What happened? Now, is this for you, or is this for the Canley Evening News? No, I mean, of course, I'm interested professionally, but no. I'd like to know, if you'll tell me. Sam died. One of the officers trapped in the fire. We were mates. Oh, was she a good friend? He. What, were you and he? No, no, we were just mates. I mean, there was, could have been a possibility at one point, but why spoil a good friendship? Well, why, indeed. Better see you two on speaking terms again. Oh, Kathy, we've been waiting for you. Mrs. Gundo would like a word with you in private. It's Samina. You know how she is? Your sergeant was right. They took her from the station after you called me. Who? Kamal Zafar and some of his friends. They're taking her to marry one of my cousins. He's a respectable man. His first wife died and now he needs to take another. He lives in Pakistan. Do you know where Samina is? I'm afraid of what they will do to her. Kamal is a violent man. They're holding her in some kind of uh, warehouse, uh, a lockup, a garage. Sarge. Mm -hmm. Cad just phoned through an index on a white van. The registered user is Kamal Zafar. Where? Off the Woodley Heath Road, heading west. 
Right, get down there. Well, I thought I was officially off the case. We're on again now. Mrs Gundo has decided to drop the complaint against you. Can she do that? She claims it's a joint decision by her and her husband. Cheers, Sarge. Do you know where this lock-up is? Oh, no, but it's not far. Mrs Gundo, you do realise we'll have to ask you to make a formal statement. Well, the charges against you and your husband, they could be serious. I know. That's why I thought, as you seem to understand, it's not my husband's fault. He sees the way young people are here. He doesn't want Samina to become too British. So he lets a man like Zafar loose on her. It is the family of the groom who employ him, not us. Please, seeing as I'm telling you... I'm sorry, Mrs Gunda. I can't make any promises. Kevin, how did you swing bail? Do you know where Samina is? I've got a fix on Zafar. I'm off there now. There's a chance I can oh, bring I'll come in. with you. No, this time you stay behind. I'll call you at Mandy's later. No, I'll be here. I'll wait. OK. Hey, you looking for this? Oh, yeah, sure. What's so. up? Let's know when the celebration starts. Huh? When you crack it open, give us a shout. Yeah, probably at the end of the shift. I'll keep it in the property cupboard for now. Cheers. Have you seen the driver yet? No, sorry, sorry. DC Kane from 4-8. Are you receiving over? Go ahead, Sarge. Mrs Gundar alleges that Zappa is responsible for Samina's abduction, so if you find him, bring him in. All received. Over. The murder squad's eating us out of the house and over again. Always thinking of your stomach, Tony. Well, it's been a very busy day. We've already had two muggings, one artifice fraud, and we're still looking for the wife of last night's sudden death. The amazing disappearing woman. She's not coming up on the voters' register, and the council records Mr Farrell's been paying tax on a single person's allowance. Ooh, sounds like your woman's got a bit of explaining to do. You know, never mind about Tony's stomach. You know, I know the father of Debbie's babies. Oops, speak of the devil. What? I just wanted to know the father was. I'm afraid it's no one you know. Well, congratulations, Sarge. Yeah, congratulations. Well, I better get going. I've got one on one with the superintendent. Well, have you to me, mate. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll show you that. He's got to come back for the van at some point. That looks painful. Come on, Zappa. I'm arresting you on suspicion of a conspiracy to abduct Samina Gunda. Are you uh, going out to see Chandler? I'll take you up if you like. Yeah, thanks, Mickey. I'll see you, Simon. Yeah, this one. Are we going upstairs? Well, I thought you'd appreciate a little chat first. Another angle. About Anne Merrick? Oh, you know about her? Well, there's more to it than that. Such as? Yes, yeah, sit down. I've just spoken to the manager of the estate near Woodley Heath Road, where the van was found, yeah? Yeah. Uh, he says he rented a garage for immediate use yesterday to an IC hall. Any description? Nothing specific. Could be Mr Gundar or the bounty hunter. Right, well, Brandon's bringing in Zaffa to the station now, so uh, I think we'd better go and check out that lock-up. Witness says she saw a red saloon car travelling south along Waterman's Road about 8.45. Well, that fits in the last one, is interesting. The car was certainly in the area, but almost three hours later. He was never against something with it. We'll play on this information tonight at the press then. Hey! Who are you? Simon, this is a restricted area. Sorry about that. Let's wait for the superintendent. Yeah, we will find him in here. Come in. Sir. This is Simon Kitson. Simon, nice to see you again. Hi. Thank you, Jack. Right, I'll leave you to it. Simon, grab a seat. That uh, article you did on Tony Stamp, very good. I wrote it the way I saw it. Well, one of the hazards of the job is that we can become a target for abuse, but fortunately you can't keep a good man like Tony down. Well, I guess in this job you could develop a lot of enemies. Like Anne Merritt, you mean? 
DCI Meadows said it would be all right if I asked you a few questions about that. I've nothing to hide, so go ahead, shoot. Mickey, I asked you to be quiet about the baby. Why do you have to come do that? Sarge, people have got eyes. Cass had already worked it out for herself. Besides, so women in your condition, you ought to be pleased. I am. I just didn't want you fuck on it round the station. Come on, Sarge. People would have worked it out sooner or later. If you're going to be better sooner, that's all. Haven't you got anything better to do? Where'd you get with this necklace? There's an engraver's mark on it as well as a name. I'm just going to ring around and find out who's got a record of doing it. Why don't you check your usual places? Well, I've tried every Sarah Black in the book and had no joy. So come on, do you love him? Who? My mystery man, Mr. X. Mickey. All information should be What? You don't even know, do you? I'll tell you, I knew exactly how I felt about Kate. Excuse me, Sarge. Well, obviously, it was a great sadness. But I hadn't seen her for many years, but she was an old friend. And it's a great shock when you lose someone you were once close to. Do you know of anything in the past that might have started a depression? No. Uh, as far as I know, Anne's case was chemical rather than psychological. Not even something like a friend's suicide? I gather you both knew Louise Marsden very well. Look, wait a minute. I've got no intention of discussing Anne's problems with you. This is a very difficult time for her family. Can we move on, please? Fine. Superintendent, uh, you were brought into Sunhill after a period of corruption at the station. That's right. Well, wouldn't you say that for someone who'd come in to clean the place up, there's been rather a lot of um, unfortunate deaths? Sorry, don't know what you're talking about. Well, where were you when Inspector Conway died? Didn't you give the order to stand down just before the officers died in the fire? Superintendent, are you accident prone? Unlucky or just incompetent? Right, that's enough. I withdraw permission for you to use this interview. Don't even try it. Good quote. Right. This way. 958, is it? That's the one. Just hang on a minute. Can't hear anything, can you? Yeah. No, go on. Just missed her. Yeah. I looked in here before. Uh, there's got to be something. Certainly didn't have much money. Why? Reminds me. There you go. What's that for? For Karen. Some rent money to tide her over. Nah, you're all right. Tony, I know my own sister. You're never going to see it from her. <sighs> OK. Cheers. It's Mr Farrell. Little bloke, isn't he? Yeah, so. Same shoe size as his missus. Look at them. <laughs> well, I think you found Mrs. Farrell. What? Sudden death not really your bag, is it? I mean, first of all, you have a dog die on you. Then when you go and tell Wayne Bescott about Mr. Farrell, he doesn't give a monkey's. Yeah, all right, Tony. When I heard you from upstairs, I thought you might be Mrs. F. Are you going to tell him? Or shall I? We're as interested in Samina's well-being as you are. Ah, oh, he speaks at last. That's why we had to keep Kevin Hooper away from her. By locking her up. Oh, people tend to do as I say. Why is that? because you intimidate them. It's not like that. I'm just carrying out the family's wishes. Oh. Well, we'll see when we find some Mina. Oh, you're too late for that. Right now, she's getting on a plane for Karachi.
Ladies and gentlemen, sorry to keep you waiting. I would like to make a statement. We can now confirm that the latest victim of the river murders is Miriam Ray. She was 25 years old and worked as a researcher for a recruitment agency. She was last seen entering her flat at 22 Haygarth Court in Sunhill at approximately 7 p.m. on the 15th of this month. What we're asking is if anybody has any information concerning the time of man to the I think I slipped off his Christmas card list. asking the public in. Were you in the area of Tredegar Street on that Friday night between the hours of 6 and 11 p.m.? Did you see a red saloon car or any car with the partial registration number K549? I was told you wouldn't be bothering us again. Well, the complaint's been dropped. Your wife came into the station. Still, you can't keep us here. The plane's about to leave. I've got a few questions for you and your daughter. I don't say a word. Mr. Gunda, we believe you and your associate, Gamal Zafar, were responsible for kidnapping Samina and that you falsely imprisoned her before bringing her here against her will. It's not true. Samina came freely. She's going to Pakistan to her new husband. Is that true? You see, she wants to go to Pakistan. Samina, if you want to press charges, we'll make sure that you're safe. You won't have to marry this man. And you'll be free to see Kevin again. Now, he's waiting for you at the station. You'll never see him again. Mr. Gunda, stop it. Don't shout at her. I'll go if you promise to leave Kevin alone. If you don't fly with me now, your parents will be taken to court. If I press charges, will my mom and dad go to prison? What they're doing is against the law. They haven't done anything wrong. I came to this airport because I wanted to. It's my choice. What we're asking is if anybody has any information concerning the time or manner of her disappearance, would they please contact the murder team at Sunhill Police Station or Scotland Yard at any time? Ladies and gentlemen, any questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Detective, Detective, Inspector, could you tell us what make of the car is? Maybe we have no clear information on that. Were any of the victims raped? There's no physical evidence of any sexual assault whatsoever. Excuse me, sir, please, please, please. All the victims so far have been strangled. Is there any reason why the police aren't telling us this? The manner of death is still being investigated, and you have no right to speculate at present. You can change your mind. Samina, please, we've got Zafar in Sun Hill. They won't be able to hurt you if you tell us the truth. She's made her decision. This is what she wants to do. He's right. This is what I want to do. Please, say goodbye to Kevin. We're trying to find anything we can on that red car. It's the biggest lead we've had. We haven't formally released any information about the victims being strangled. Where did you pick that up? Journalist knows. You want to be careful someone doesn't break it. PC Rickman, I'll see you in my car in five minutes. Can you believe that guy? He calls a press junk and expects no one to ask questions. By the way, thanks for that tip about Anne Merrick. I owe you a drink for that. What are you doing Friday night? Well, nothing special. It's a date, then? Uh, yeah, just as friends. Sure. Jack. You got fairly well, don't you think? Apart from Kitchen, I think he must have seen something at the station. I don't know about that, but he seems to have some very interesting sources. I take it your interview didn't go according to plan. You could say that, but then again, you could say that someone's been spoon-feeding him the type of information that could blow up in my face. No, just hold on a minute. Derek Conway, the fire, what do you think you're playing at? I didn't tell him anything like that. I thought it was a chance to preempt any criticism about Anne Merrick and you. He mentioned Louise Marsden, Jack. Where did he get that from? If this is your idea of a truce, I'd rather go back to the way we were. And if anything from my interview goes into the newspapers, I'm going to hold you personally responsible. Do you understand me? Hey, Soch. Hey, listen. 
Look, I'm sorry about earlier on, eh? It's all right, Mickey. I'll blame it on the hormones. <laughs> You're not a fan of the owners to this? Why have you still got it? So she didn't want it. So there was a present from a fiance. Relationship went bad, she lobbed it in the river. Seems a shame. Not if the fellow ain't worth it. I know who it is, Debbie. The father. His Chandler. Mickey, I don't Listen, want Listen, Debbie. My lips are sealed, yeah? I just really do hope you know what you're letting yourself in for. I mean it. In shock. You put a lot into it, Brandon. Not enough. I should listen to you. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I suppose you've got Kevin Bale at least. Can I make a peace offering? I mean, maybe over a drink. I think I'll take a rain check. Thanks. You've got some explaining to do. You told Jack Meadows about that alibi you gave me for the rape. You were being investigated for murder. He promised he wouldn't tell anyone. What on earth made you go to him? I don't know. I, I needed support. I'm having a baby for crying out loud. No, we're having a baby and pretty soon the whole station will know about it. So as far as I can see, Debbie, you've got a pretty clear-cut choice. It's either Jack Meadows or me. All I did was point out to Kitson what Chandler's been doing since he's arrived here. Killing innocent people and getting off scot-free with it. He thinks I'm to blame. I've been waiting for this moment for months and months and months. People are starting to realise what he's done. Well, that was in the past. He agreed to let me run things the way we wanted. All that's out the window now, and that's down to you. Why is that? Because I've spoiled your cosy little deal. What a shame, eh? Look by the belly full of your insubordination. Don't find me, then, Gov. Because that's the only way I'm going to stop telling the world what Chandler's done. It's over, Mickey. The trail has gone cold. No, it ain't over. I'll be looking into the Americ file. He's right under our noses, Gov. Well, tell me. First of all, you tell me. Are you in or are you out? Next, on the bill. Get down! Oh, 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 please, oh, please stop! I want you out of here now. Can't talk to me like that. Why don't you just be the good little brother you've always been and do exactly what I say. Gov? We're going to finish Chandler. You and me, completely finish him.